respectful people ourselves. Did you know respect begets respect? If you respect someone, they'll respect you back. You know, it's that, what's that word? Rep, 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 I can't even say it. Rep, 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 well, rep, rep, I'll forget it right now. Uh, reciprocity. That's, say it again? Reciprocity. Reciprocity. Thank you very much. That's my smarter, my daughter smarter than me this morning. Um, here's the thing. This is also the only command of the promise. God says in our passage today that if we obey this command, our days will be prolonged in the land which God gives you. Now God could be speaking. He could be speaking of a long physical life. Or he could be speaking of the quality of our life. Think about how sad your life is uh, if you cannot bring yourself to honor your parents. You constantly hang on to the bitterness. You constantly hold on to the envy. And, and get this, it destroys you from within. Some of us, we actually bear those scars very well on the outside. And we still are singing songs like victory in Jesus. But we got no victory. Forgive and you shall be. On the physical side of things, we have at least a couple of places in the Old Testament where a disobedient child or a child who strikes their parent is put to death. On the practical side, if a parent tells his child to, uh, to not to drink or do drugs um, and the kid ignores the parent, they could die from that. See, parents are God's representative. Now, let me, oh, this is, I got I to settle here for a moment. And then we're going to, because we'll, we'll be closing here shortly. But did you know that we are God's representatives, parents? So some of you are here this morning saying, so you know what, I've never had any children. So I guess I'm off the hook. That's not true. That's a whole other message. But just to be clear, some of you are still going to be spiritual parents. You may, not get, you may never give birth. You may never sire children your own. I, I didn't want to leave anybody out. Did you? God made them male and female. And that's how we're supposed to, to repopulate the world. Somebody say amen. amen. But you're still going to be an example. You're still going to be a representative of God. You're still, you're still representing the, the one who created you. Are, you. are you not created in the image of your creator? Well, maybe you think you're a finished product. No, I'm not finished. He's not finished with me yet, thank God. No, you're still here. I'm still here. There's still work. What? There's still work to be done on me. And get this, there's work to be done through me in Jesus' name. You see, we are representatives of God, and what happens is that parents teach us all we need to make it in life. And Jesus had parents. How many of you know Jesus had parents? Oh, boy. I thought this would be an easy message this morning, easy lesson, but there's so many practical applications in this. There's a reason that God came into the world, and, he, and listen, God in Christ. But guess what? Christ was in Mary. And then Christ was in the world. He had a family. Remember we talked about it earlier? I mentioned it, about that close-knit Jewish family. Even though they lived in, in different provinces, yet they still knew about each other. They knew what was good. They knew the goings on from one, from one community to the next because their families cared for one another. They spoke to one another. See, your job is not to make kids happy. But to prepare them to be God-fearing, responsible adults. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? So many people today go, you know what, when I, actually someone said this morning, well, when I went to church, you know, uh, I was forced to go to church, and I really didn't want to go to church, but I had to do what, what my, my parents said for me to do. I had to go. But there are those who went, and they were glad that they went. I mean, there's all different levels of this. 
But I'm here to tell you that what needs to happen is not just taking them to church, but bringing the church home with you. No, I don't mean bring the whole congregation to your house, although sometimes it helps. What I'm telling you is to absolutely reflect and mirror what God is doing in your life. You see, he says, honor your mother and father. In Ephesians, he says, honor your mother and father. It's, a, it's, it's the only commandment with a promise. What is the promises that God has given to us? This command is, is it's going to be easy for some of us, hard for others. But regardless, we are not exempt from it. Parents, whether you have natural children or not, you can make this command easy to follow by raising your children the way that God expects you to. There are those here this morning who your children aren't here. And if you go to them, they may, don't preach to me, you don't, don't judge me, don't this, don't that. Hold on. Before, before you go defending yourself, ask yourself, maybe before you and God and maybe some others, am I not reflecting the image of God in my life to them? But we have a responsibility. See, because you need to understand the significance. Why Jesus? Why the church? If you can't answer those questions, you can't, you can't stand in, from a, a, a positional leadership standpoint of saying, you know, you're going because I'm your mom or I'm your dad. For crying out loud, my kids are, hey, aren't we going to church? <laughs> We're going to be late, Dad. I did not see that as disrespect. As a matter of fact, for me, it was the highest form of honor. Parents, maybe you did not get off to what you wanted to do in life because you maybe had children that are at a much younger age. Maybe, I don't know, anybody plans children out here? They, they do, but, but you know what, get, just know, this, we, there are some things we just need to get over. Don't compound your problem by blaming your kids. Wait a second, I just turned the tables. Some of us, we want to blame our parents. Some parents want to blame their kids. I, show of hands, how many of you asked to be born when you were born? Anybody? Nope. No one did, did you? We can't blame our kids. No matter what your family has been or is like today. Hmm, let, me, let me close this one statement. No matter what your family has been. Oh, I don't have it up there. Well, because I just thought of it, I guess. I thought I wrote it down. But no matter what your family has been, know this. From this day forward, Jesus offers you a chance to be part of a new family. His I said I was glad when, we went to, when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. Amen. How many of you could say the same thing? Amen. Because I want to see our Father. I, I want to come to Papa's house. Maybe you had a, an aunt or an uncle or a grandma, or, or maybe it was your parents. You just can't hardly wait to get there. We were, we were so, so honored ourselves when our, uh, our grandkids wanted to just come and just hang out at the house. Because I remember being like that when I was a kid. Today, in, in this, this particular week, is an interesting season. You know, some of you are aware my, my mother resides with us. And uh, Have you had a good birthday thus far? Has your birthday been good? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah you had some of the best dinner guests? Yeah. <laughs> That's true, yes. Autumn and Aiden, did they, they took you to where? IHOP. IHOP. Enjoy, just enjoy them and enjoy the food. Amen. It's not over. You see, if I were to say my mother was perfect, she'd say, I taught you better than that. Don't lie in church. <laughs> see? She's not going to lie in church either. 
My point is, 